for years now, NASA has been exploring the Red Planet with the help of rovers. Even though they aim to find out whether there is life on the planet, they are still exploring other things about the planet to find out whether it can sustain human life. Well, that among other things. One of the things that their rovers have found is evidence of an active volcano. But how could this be? Hello, and welcome back to our channel Mars Discovery. Today, we are going to take a look at the active volcano that the Perseverance rover found on Mars. But before we continue, take a moment to subscribe to our channel for more amazing videos. And with that said, let's take a look, shall we? NASA has a rover known as Perseverance that is roaming around the Red Planet. This rover is actively collecting samples on the planet in preparation for the agency's Mars Sample Return Program. This is a program whereby they are planning to bring all of the collected samples back to Earth and study them. This is meant to give them a better understanding of the planet. Thanks to the six-wheeled rover, scientists with NASA's Perseverance Mars rover have discovered that the bedrock on which the rover has been roaming since landing there in February was most likely formed from red-hot magma. This discovery has a lot of implications that could help scientists better understand and accurately date critical events in the history of Yezero Crater. Not only in that part, but even on the rest of the planet. Upon studying the rocks with the rover's help, scientists have concluded that these rocks in the crater have interacted with water multiple times over the eons. They have also concluded that they also contain some organic molecules. All of these things along with other findings were presented during a news briefing at the American Geophysical Union Fall Science Meeting that was held in New Orleans. The mission science team was already looking into the region even before the rover landed on the planet. They just had a lot of questions about the origin of the rocks in the area. They were curious whether they were sedimentary, which is the compressed accumulation of mineral particles that were possibly carried to the location by an ancient river system, or whether they were igneous, which means that they were probably born in lava flows rising to the surface from a now long extinct Martian volcano. Ken Farley, a Perseverance project scientist at Caltech in Pasadena, said, I was beginning to despair that we would never find the answer, but then our PIXL instrument got a good look at the abraded patch of rock from the area nicknamed South Seta. And it all became clear, the crystals within the rock provided the smoking gun. This is a drill that is fitted at the end of Perseverance's robotic arm, and it is capable of abrading or grinding rock surfaces. This is to allow other instruments such as PIXL to start studying them. The Planetary Instrument for X-ray Lithochemistry PIXL, makes use of X-ray fluorescence to map the elemental composition of rocks. PIXL helps analyze a rock on South Seta that the science team had chosen to take a core sample from using the rover's drill. According to PIXL data, the rock, dubbed Brac, is composed of an unusual abundance of large olivine crystals engulfed in pyroxene crystals. Farley commented on this, saying that any good geology student can immediately confirm that such a texture on rock means that it was formed when crystals grew and settled in a slowly cooling magma, such as a thick lava flow, lava lake, or magma chamber. He then said, The rock was then altered by water several times, making it a treasure trove that will allow future scientists to date events in Yezero better understand the period in which water was more common on its surface and reveal the early history of the planet. Mars Sample Return is going to have great stuff to choose from. This said multi-mission Mars Sample Return campaign began with Perseverance, which is still collecting Martian rock samples in search of any ancient microscopic life. Of Perseverance's 43 sample tubes, seven of them have already been sealed to date. Four of these six have rock cores, one has the Martian atmosphere, and the other contains witness material to observe any sort of contamination. That the rover might have taken there from Earth. Mars Sample Return mostly seeks to bring select tubes back to Earth, where generations of scientists will have the opportunity to study them with powerful lab equipment that is far too large to send to Mars. However, they are yet to determine whether the olivine-rich rock formed in a thick lava lake cooling on the surface or in a subterranean chamber that was later exposed by erosion. 
Some more great news from the Mars sample return is the discovery of organic compounds by the Sherlock, scanning habitable environments with ramen and luminescence for organics and chemicals. Instrument These carbon-containing molecules are not only in the interiors of abraded rocks that Sherlock analyzed, but also in the dust of some non-abraded rocks. However, the confirmation of organics is not a confirmation that life once existed in Yezero, and left telltale signs in the form of biosignatures. Organics can originate from both biological and non-biological mechanisms. Luther Beagle, a Sherlock Principal Investigator at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory in Southern California, said, Curiosity also discovered organics at its landing site within Gale Crater. Curiosity is another one of NASA's rovers, he went on to say. What Sherlock adds to the story is its capability to map the spatial distribution of organics inside rocks and relate those organics to minerals found there. This helps us understand the environment in which the organics formed. More analysis needs to be done to determine the method of production for the identified organics. This preservation of organics inside ancient rocks, regardless of where they originated, found at both Gale and Yezero craters means that the potential biosignatures, which are signs of past or present life, could also be preserved. According to Beagle, the only way to answer this question is when these samples are returned to Earth. However, he claims that the preservation of organics is very exciting. Once these samples are returned to Earth, they will serve as a source of scientific inquiry and discovery for many years. In addition to the capability to collect rock core samples, Perseverance has also brought the first ground-penetrating radar to the surface of Mars. The RIMFAX, radar imager for Mars' subsurface experiment, creates a radargram of subsurface features up to about 33 feet, or about 10 meters deep. The data from the first released radar gram was collected as the rover drove across a ridgeline from the Crater Floor Fractures Rough geological unit in the Seta geologic unit. The ridgeline has multiple rock formations that have a visible downward tilt. With the help of the RIMFAX data, the Perseverance's scientists now know that these angled rock layers continue at the same angle well below the surface. The radar gram also shows the Seta rock layers are also exposed below those of the crater floor fractured rough. These results also confirm the science team's belief that the creation of Seta preceded that of crater floor fractured rough. This ability to observe some geological features further below the surface adds a new dimension to the team's geological mapping capabilities on Mars. What do you think of the findings so far? Feel free to let us know in the comment section below. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel, Mars Discovery, and hit the bell icon for more intriguing content. Until then, goodbye.